how do modular arithmetic is going to be the focus of our video today and we are going to be learning about how do we understand modular arithmetic we're going to be working in modulo 5 but if you're actually going to listen to this it's not only going to help you for modulo 5 you're also going to learn how to work in any modulo whenever you are working with mathematics welcome to dev academy where we are devoted to building academic excellence in students especially for their stem subjects if you are here to subscribe click on the subscription icon click on the notification icon if you like the videos click to let us know leave your comments so that we can get feedback on what you need from us as best and together we can build academic excellence so let's head over to our video for today as we learn together in this question number 11 we are asked to complete the addition and multiplication table in modulo 5 on the set 2 3 and 4. now before we go ahead if you remember the wall clock with its um, gradation of hours normally if you have our wall clock like this and we want to give our time we can say we have um when it's two o'clock we know it's two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock eight o'clock nine o'clock but in a scenario in which we are talking about something like 15 hours what we do ideally is we number from one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one two three now 12 13 14 15 and we say that 15 hours is synonymous to three o'clock um what we notice is that on our 12 we round off our counting and then we start with one two and three in the same way we can tax 17 hours as five and then we can tax 20 hours as eight so now this is obtainable because we're actually rounding off at 12. So 12 we can take as our benchmark and any number after 12 we can round up to start all over again from 1, 2, 3 and go. This is the concept of modulo that we are going to be working with in this question. But here instead of working with modulo 12, we are going to be working with um, modulo 5. Modulo 5. So now that means that at every point at which you get to 5, we round off at five so we don't have five at all we can only have zero one two three and four and that will make a complete circle before we go over our circle and start all over from one again so in that particular instance that means that if you want to tag let's say number seven one two three four five six seven seven will be congruent to two that is the language we use when we're talking about modulo 9 will be congruent to 4 and then um, let's say 12 9 10 11 12 12 will also be congruent to 2. now all these are obtainable whenever we are working with um, mode 5 which is the mode that will be working in our question modulo 5. so with this background we can also look at a better means of expressing this normally we can find our expression by just um, using the remainder concept like um, if we are dividing by 5 like 4 times 3 normally is 12 but now I want to use it in modulo 5 if we are doing that in modulo 5 we know that 4 times 3 originally is 12 but if we take 12 in modulo 5 what we are going to have is 12 let's say we divide 12 we use 5 to divide 12 that will be 2 remainder 2 so the value of 4 multiplied by 3 in mode 5 is 2 which is the value of the remainder when 12 is divided by 5 in the same way we can say 4 times 4 in mode 5 that will be 16 but now, if you want to find 16 in mode 5, we can say 16 divided by 5. 16 divided by 5 is 3, and we will have 1 as the remainder. So, 16 in mode 5 is actually 1. So now, using this concept also, we can use that to solve our question in modulo. So now, in our table, the addition table, we can go ahead to find the expression for the modulo when we are doing our addition. 
In the first table, 2 plus 2 is 4. That's not up to 5. We don't have a problem with that. 2 plus 3 is 5, but we we'll round that up to 0. 2 plus 4 is 6. And since we constitute mode, you to constitute 1 under mode 5. 2 and 3 again is 0. 3 and 3 is 6, which is 1. 3 and 4 is 7. And that will be 2 under mode 5. 2 and 4 is 6. That will be 1. 3 and 4 is 7. That will be 2. 4 and 4 is 8. That will be 3 under modulo 5. Now, that is quite easy. But now, what about our multiplication table? Using the same concept, we can go ahead to find the values of um, our operation when we are using multiplication under modulo 5. Yeah, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. But now, if you want to write that out, you can say it's something like 2 times 3, that is 6. 6 divided by 5, we know it is 1 remainder 1. So, the remainder is what we write, that's 1. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 divided by 5 is 1. We have a remainder of 3, so we have 3. Then 2 times 3 again, we've expressed that before. We have modulo, it will be 1 under modulo 5. 3 times 3 is 9. And if we divide 9 by 5, we have run remainder 4. So we have 4. 3 times 4 is 12. We've done that before. That will be 2. Then 4 times 2, again, we've done, that's 8. We've done that before. 4 times 3 is 12. We've done that before hey, also. And 4 times 4 is 16. We know that is also 1 because we've done that before. So with this, we've gotten... All the entries in our table, we fill them up and we are done with question number um, 11 here, the first part. Now, to use the tables to solve the equation for with the operation on E and the operation on 2 is equal to 1 under modulo 5. Now, first and foremost, our 4 multiplied by E, we can take as a particular number say x, so that you can write it out to be 4 times e plus 2 is equal to 1. Now, under modulo 5, let's say we are working backward. We need to ask ourselves, what number are we going to add to 2 to give us 1 under modulo 5? Looking at our addition table, we can see that 4 is the number that we can add to 2. So if you had 4 to 2, if you say 2 and 4, that will give us 1. So that means x that we are trying to find here, the number that we are trying to um, operate on 2 to give us 1 under modulo 5, that means x is 4. So we have 4 plus 2 is 1. And that means that um, 4 multiplied by E is a 4 that we just got initially. You know, we represented that as X. So now, we are querying a, a number that we can multiply by 4 to give us 4. And here, in our table, we don't really have that. We only have 2 multiplied by 2. We don't have... That's the only one giving us 4. There is no other entry. But now, if we're actually looking at this and we really understand the concept under modulo 5, we are saying that we are looking for a particular number that will multiply by 4 under modulo 5 that will give us 4. That means that number will be a product of 4, and then if 5 is used to divide that number, we are going to get 1. So we are looking for a product of 4 um, that we have a remainder 4 whenever we divide that number by 5. So the product of 4 with remainder 4, whenever we, rem we divide by 5, actually it's as simple as 1. It is 1. Because normally 4 times 1 will actually give us 4, and 4 over 5 will be like M um, and a remainder of a remainder of 4 whenever we are working with that. So our here is meaning that we have 4 multiplied by 1 is equal to 4 in modulo 5. So E in our first question is 1, and that is 
the answer to that question number A. Now, question number B. Since we now understand the concept of using operation in modulo, now in question number B, we are given that 4 plus n times 2 is 2 in mode 5. Now, in the same manner, let's say our first two entries, 4 and n, let's call it y. So y multiplied by 2 is 2. Looking at our table, what entry do we have that is multiplying 2 to give 2? The other entry is 2. One. The only number that will multiply 2 and still give us 2 is actually 1. So, therefore, 4 plus n is equal to 1. Is the y that we are putting in. And that is under modulo 5. So, now, what number do we add to 4 that will give us 1 under the modulo operation 5? Now, we are looking at 4. Then our answer should be 1. If you are to take out our previous addition, you can see that 4 and 2, 4 and 2, whenever we add them together, it will give us 1 in modulo 5. So, meaning that our hand n is equal to 2. And with that, we've also gotten the value of n. That's all we're going to be having for today is Dave Tooth Academy. And if you have found this video useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, click on the notification icon, like the videos, share with your loved ones, share with your friends, share with your younger ones, share with your relatives, and together, let's build academic excellence in students. Until next time, God bless you.